can you charge an electric car like this new Hyundai Insta City EV with a portable power station like this EcoFlow Delta 3 Plus, which stores one kilowatt hour of energy? Let's have a look. Please contribute. It really helps my independent, honest journalism. What we need for this test is an electric car, a car charger that uses a standard power socket, which can plug into the EcoFlow Delta 3 Plus. So let's plug it in to the car and the power station and see what happens. Does it charge or is there an error message? Things you need to do are unlock the car so the charging port can be accessed. Now, we've got the standard home power socket Hyundai charger plugged into the power station. We've got the other end plugged into the car. Next thing to do is turn the power station on. And most importantly, <laughs> easy rookie error to make. You might think it's not working. Actually, you need to turn the AC power sockets on as well. Start charging. There you go. The car has started charging. And it's charging at about just over two kilowatt rate. Almost 2.2. And it says that the whole one kilowatt of energy in this will be drained in 23 minutes. Let's see what it looks like inside the car in the status display. So obviously a one kilowatt hour power station is not gonna last for 11 hours and 20 minutes, but it is charging the car, which is pretty cool. At ah, but now we have a problem. It stopped charging. I suspect what happened is the car tried to pull start charging too much from the power station, and it couldn't sustain 2.2 kilowatt output for more than a minute or two, so it paused working. You've clearly got to pay attention to how much the peak sustained output of your power station is because otherwise it might overload. But there is a trick I can use in the Hyundai car settings, I think, to reduce the amount of output, there you go, overload, that's demanded from the power station and that should stop the overload happening. So we're in the car and we press setup and we go to the EV menu. Now, charging limit. That's the total amount of the battery that can be charged via DC or AC. That's not what we want. We want to limit how much the AC power charging cable supplied by Hyundai sucks from the power bank. So it'll charge slower from the power bank but hopefully this time it won't overload it. Let's see what happens. This is take three. Start charging. Okay, the car started charging. And now it's only drawing one and a quarter kilowatts from the battery. Let's see if it can sustain that without overheating or overloading. Obviously, it'll take longer for the one kilowatt hour of electricity to be added to the car in this slower charging rate. This is really good. Clearly the Delta 3 Plus can sustain 6 amps power output to the Hyundai Insta. Let's see if it can sustain 8 amps without overloading. Back to the car settings. Hmm. Doesn't look like Hyundai allows that much flexibility. I think at 90% it's still gonna trip. Let's try anyway, but I suspect this will result in an overload. Okay, we've changed to 90%, so the power draw is quite increased compared to 60%. Obviously it means the car can add the energy in this battery much faster. But question is, will it overload? 
It's actually worked for several minutes and I'm surprised about that because the rated output for the this power station is 1800 watts sustained ongoing. It can do more temporarily for a few minutes with the X boost feature, but I don't want to damage it, so I'm going to reduce the power draw. Back to 60% while we finish this video. And just for reference, 60% is about 1.3 kilowatt charging rate. We've established that it can be done. You can charge an electric car using a portable power station like this EcoFlow Delta 3 Plus using the standard power socket charger that comes with the electric car, but is it actually worth doing practically? The reality is this is quite heavy. This power station weighs about 12 and a half kilos and one kilowatt hour of stored energy less charging losses into the car is enough to take this Hyundai Insta maybe 10 kilometers. That's why it isn't very practical and you don't see in real life people going on long road trips having huge portable battery banks in their boot because to get any real kind of decent extra range added to your car, say 50 kilometers, you would need a portable battery bank of maybe 50 kilos or more. And that's not really portable. That's really heavy and cumbersome to put in the back of your car. It would take several people to carry that safely. But besides the fact that it's really heavy, it would be economically impractical because the cost of these, which I'll put on screen one at a time for use at home or for camping trips is really practical. You could recharge everything in your tent easily with this while camping for several days. But if you multiply the cost of this by say five, that's not realistic. Unless the cost of these portable power stations plummets and their weight also plummets by maybe a factor of five or 10, they're not gonna be a practical electric jerry can for your electric car to use in emergencies when the charges are broken in a remote area. Thanks for liking, subscribing and sharing my videos. It really helps me make more videos like this for you. And have a look at the suggested videos up above. I'm pretty sure you'll like those as well. Thanks and see you later.